Ruben was going to be offered the job of the music director of the New York City Gamings Chorus, and the board of directors had already, from New York had already reached out to him to apply for the job with the understanding that it was very, very likely that he would get it. But we just felt like that he needed to go through the process of you know, going through an interview. And the Boston job was open at that point. We had we really didn't know anything about Boston before at all, and everybody was so welcoming and open, and the town was beautiful, and it felt like the course was in a really it was in a position that they were really ready to move forward. It just felt like a really good fit, so we decided to move up here for that. And I opened up this application that came from Kansas City, and there was this what appeared to me to be hastily written letter that just talked about, I've done this, I've done this, and I know how to sling a mean party. And I thought, I've never heard of this person, so I'm gonna put Reuben Reynolds at the bottom of the list. There were other well-known candidates who we were looking at, but, oh, you know, the, the experience in the background was real, so I guess we better talk to this person who can sling a mean party. Reuben walked into town, we sat down to lunch, and I had prepared my very particular set of questions. And lunch became a, a love affair between Ruben and myself in terms of our vision for the choruses, our point of view, um, what we wanted the, the organization to be. We had him come in and meet and run a rehearsal and we were so overwhelmed when Ruben came in the room by his energy which was probably more than the entire chorus had. Now guys, we're over singing at the beginning of every line so we're using our air too fast. Can we start please the bottom line of page 10? No. We're going that's part of where we're having the pitch problem. That's actually really, really good, guys. Thank you all very much. Ruben had more energy than everyone. And it was really quite astounding to see what he was capable of. And we had no doubt in our mind that Ruben was going to be our next music director. I'm Ruben Reynolds, music director of Boston Gay Men's Chorus, and it is a pleasure to be here with you tonight. With the chorus, it was like the circus had showed up in town when Bill and I got here. Was, we were so wild and extravagant and loud and over the top, and Bostonians by nature are a bit more whole New England reserve and all of that. But it was incredible in that we had, you know, a hundred best friends immediately that we wanted to get to know and that we wanted to know us. And I remember Ruben walked on stage and introduced himself as music director of the Heartland Men's Chorus, which was fantastic. Um, the first of, and, and Ruben, you know I love you, the first of many misstatements that I stood on stage and enjoyed Ruben making. Um, one thing that I would say, and this is, I'm going to brag about Ruben here, but um, one, of the, one of the reasons I think that, that we've been able to achieve, achieve a level of success now is the fact that we've been able to put together an artistic team um, that is really, I think, unmatched between the combination of what you do, with what Chad does, what Michelle brings to the table, um, and then all the other people in the chorus that you helped manage, um, that's not an easy thing to do. And it really reflects in the quality of the, um, of the performances that we give now because we're able to really strive for stuff that's very, very high, high quality. We've been together for so long and um, there was never a doubt that we wouldn't be together. We've never not. Um, we've never had a separation. We've never broken up. We've never, you know, we've been together we've been solid. Been together no, gosh, no. Bill and Ruben have really uh, been great and welcoming their relationship goals, and I've told them that before. <laughs> and then that always leads Ruben to tell the story of how they met and how they've been together forever, and how uh, Bill wasn't even legal when they started dating. And then, yeah how they make it work or how they've made it work for so long. And I was kind of just making conversation, but Ruben took the question very seriously. 
uh, his response was, we never looked away. And I was like, okay, it's a good answer. We want to work together. We want to keep on doing this together. We feel like it's, I feel like it's a privilege to get to go to work with my husband and, and that we get to communicate and we get to get to, get to create all these amazing things. And um, to me, it would just be unthinkable to jeopardize that relationship by not making it work. So we just make it work. When we were young musicians and we were looking at what we were going to do, when we really had to make a choice, were we going to be going out and freelancing all over the country separately, or were we going to find a way to create a career where we were together all the time? And for us, it was the decision was simple. We found a way to create a career that was right at home and intertwined together. We had commissioned a piece um, which we call the Whitman Oratorio. And um, we were planning to perform it in Symphony Hall, and we were also planning to take it to the gala festival. During that time, Ruben ended up having to be away. Um, and we were prepared for the concert by um, a friend of the chorus. And we knew that um, at the very end of the perform or the rehearsal period that uh, Ruben would be coming back and he'd have very little time to work with us before we actually went on stage to perform it. But we were all really excited and, and we missed him. And during this time our audience knew that he was away too. Um, so the, the night of the performance, um, <clears throat> when we march on stage and the, the audience is applauding as usual and then it quiets down. And then Ruben walks on stage and um, the, the place just went nuts. Everybody knew that he'd been gone and this was sort of his um, reappearance and everybody knew how important his performance was to us and to him. the audience to, to, to quiet down and it was so rewarding and so amazing to hear um, and feel the emotions from the chorus and to hear from the audience just how happy everybody was to have him back and we went on I can't believe how we did it I mean you pull through those emotions but that was one of the best performances that we ever had and um, I'll just never forget that as a sign of how much love there is in our community, in our audience, and in the chorus for Ruben, and how it showed up that day. If we're going to be able to feel like that we have the footing to be able to ask other people to contribute and to step up and to, and to be a part of this, um, I don't feel like that we would be able to do that if we weren't actually walking the walk ourselves. So I think it's really important that we that we not only contribute artistic um, vision and our, and, our, and, our, and our sweat equity to the, um, the organization, but I think it's important that we contribute on a, um, on a more tangible um, monetary basis as well so that we can feel good about saying to other people, we believe in this so much that we're willing to do this and we think that you should too. Yeah, it's cool. My mother writes a check every quarter to the chorus and I don't have to ask her. She just does it because she knows that it's something that we do and that we're proud of and she wants to be a part of that. It's her way of saying that she's proud of what we do and it's her way of saying that she loves us and um, I love her back. <laughs> By giving back to the organization, I can further its work. I can make sure that we are on the forefront of social justice issues instead of just being an entertainment organization. For Ruben, it's always about the quality of music that we're making, but he knows that it doesn't stop there. It's about making music that tells our stories and helps people know us better. And because I've been here that long and been involved in giving to the chorus, I think it's allowed me to get to know people on so many different levels and for them to know that we are not here just to be performers, but we're here because we really believe in the mission of the course and what this course can do to really create change in the world. That we can go to the Middle East, we can go to Africa, we can do things beyond the scope of most co choruses because we believe enough in the organization to pour our souls, our 
hearts, our money, everything. This is our life. It's the dedication of the guys in the chorus that make things like this happen. It's guys who come in and rehearse for three hours every week, plus rehearsals on weekends and sectionals. It's guys who put up with me ranting and raving at them because I want to pull the best that's inside out of them so that they can put it on stage and be proud of it and tell more people about our lives. And we can find new stories coming our way through all of these new guys coming into the chorus. That's something that's, I think, very powerful, is the amalgamation of bringing together of all of these individual stories into something much greater than who we are.